This is the Experimental Structures Facility at Cal Poly Slip. Commonly referred to as Architecture Graveyard, the earliest student-built experimental architecture projects date back to the 1960s. Over the course of its 70-year history, the structures have been slowly destroyed by environmental damage and vandalism that has left them a shadow of what they once were. But this has given students an unused canvas to voice their opinions and demonstrate their artistic abilities in the form of graffiti. So, does vandalism take away from the original intent of the structures or create new meaning in them? We talked to the head of the architectural engineering department, Kevin Dong, to find out why these structures have been left in such a state of disrepair and how vandalism has affected his cleanup efforts. Poly Canyon, or the Experimentals Lab, was first established. It, it was really kind of a playground for students to explore uh, new building technologies on what we call a one-to-one -one scale. So students would go out there and they would build things working with just different materials or different techniques. Um, and then along the way, some of those experimental structures became houses. At that time, what would happen is people could live in these spaces but then they would be caretakers mm -hmm. for the area. So by caretaker, what they would do is um, say, in exchange for say free housing, um, they would devote time during the weekends to do any minor repairs mm -hmm. or maybe help with some of the landscaping. Then it was probably about 20 years ago they were starting to have power issues. Cal Poly decided to pull funding on these structures and spend the money on other campus programs. So then at that time, then we started to see kind of an increase in activity in the back. Um, and so, you know, it's just, it's been ongoing. Yeah. So first it was, there would just be things, like people going out there, and we've had, when it first started, it was people would take like shotguns and things like that, and they shot through all the glass. So if you can imagine the bridge house mm -hmm. that sits up yeah. the game, that had glass in it, yeah, that was you know, say 15 years ago. And then that was all the short thing, and they were all single pane pieces of glass. Um, we had some other modular units that were donated that those were kind of destroyed as well. We need to find a way to maintain them right? mm -hmm. and show them up to you. That is called architectural graveyard, is because we have all these structures out there, but they aren't maintained, so it is a graveyard for building. I would have to say that name has more cachet mm -hmm. than Poly Canyon <laughs> or Experimental <laughs> Structures Laboratory. Um, but I think also because of that link, right, that of, you know, architectural graveyard, that things aren't living, mm -hmm. right, that things are yeah. stopped, that does that mean that um, the care and the kind of the reverence of the structures that students built is now lost? We talked to two current architecture students who shared their opinions about the current state of the Poly Canyon structures. I think that the graffiti on a lot of the structures um, adds another layer of like culture or history to it. And it adds another sort of aspect to it that I really like. It's almost like a, like you can go back in time almost, not in just terms of seeing the structures, but also just seeing the thoughts of other students, other students' pieces of work and art on the walls of other projects. Cal Poly could be doing a lot more to prevent straight up vandalism and destruction of property, but I also hold the opinion that minor, not minor, but not as intrusive issues like the vandalism are important to Cal Poly. I think that the issue of responsibility um, isn't as straightforward as I would maybe like it to be considering I do appreciate the graffiti of the, on the structures, but I also know that a lot of students have vandalized in other ways and much more destructive and intrusive ways to these structures that are not respectful at all. Um, and I know structures like the bathrooms have had the toilets smashed and I'm sure there's been other cases in which more severe damage has occurred. But I also think 
if this is an issue that the school should employ better um, measures to protect these structures and that they could just be doing more if it really is that much of an issue. And I think it, it is because these structures, like the structure itself is a part of slow. And I think it's an important part that shouldn't just be like not taken care of. But I do also think that the graffiti part is, is also important in its own way. Personally, if I had a structure up there um, and obviously this is hypothetical because I have not put in the hours to design and then build the structure like a bunch of these other students have. I, th I don't think I would mind um, graffiti. I honestly, on I think it'd be an interesting concept to design around it, to welcome it. Um, I, if I'm not using the structure and if no one else is using the structure as historically some of the structures have been used in the past, but currently they're not, I, I would want, I would almost encourage people, students to leave their mark, to leave a bit of themselves that they, that they can come back in like 20 years maybe and be like, and then they can see what they left on my structure. I think to me, that's a really interesting concept. I wouldn't want it broken. <laughs> so I would like some level of upkeep, but I know to me personally, I wouldn't mind the graffiti. I, I would welcome it, I suppose. Hello, my name is Lexi Bro, and I am a second year landscape architect. I think it's really fun. I mean, of course, there's going to be weird things there and, and like swearing and stuff but honestly we're young adults that doesn't really affect us at all in fact we laugh at it more than anything and it, i think it's just more interesting to see the art that happens or just people having fun or even the support that gets put on the walls it's it's just really an interesting thing to look at Either people will go up there, spark in the moment, do something, or plan something out and just turn it into very beautiful things. Because it really is a graveyard. It's where they're built and it's where they're going to crumble and decay. But I don't think that's a bad thing because then when someone puts up a new project there, they of course want to try their best and make it last as long as possible there. But there's not a big pressure to have it be a forever thing where you know eventually it's gonna get worn out and pass on. But in the time that it is there, people are gonna walk around it, enjoy it, put their own art on it. And I think that's really amazing. As I mentioned before, I think it adds so much beauty to the structures. Of course, you appreciate the structures as they are because they're already so beautiful and so much work went into it. And then when it's painted over for Design Village, I get a little sad because all that art gets washed away but at the same time it kind of makes me happy because it means that more space is continuously made each year for more people and a new generation of people to put their own art onto the new area it's like one giant collaborative collaborative art piece people want to vandalize up there because it's a place to put their art in there's not many places that are open to just being spray painted like that, but Art Graveyard is one of those places where they can freely put out their art where so many people can see it without getting reprimanded. The outlook on vandalism is changing. It's turning from less of a nuisance into an art piece. A lot of the structures back there have probably aged prematurely because of all of the vandalism and the graffiti that's gone on in space. And so, if we can minimize that, that would be wonderful. Uh, do you think that vandalism and graffiti adds modern and new meaning to the structure? Um, I think some. Sometimes it can't, right? Um, I would say a lot of what we have out there is tagging, which I would put in a different realm versus graffiti or graffiti art. One of the ideas I had was, should we put up a wall 
that was built for graffiti art, kind of like what's down in Manhattan Beach or something mm. like that. It could be there for a day, it could be there for an hour, and maybe another crew comes in and paints over it, but that's okay. That's that's part of the tradition or the purpose of this, that the wall is there as an expression. I think if we could turn it into something like that, I think everyone would be on board. The future of the experimental structures. One, if we were to have caretakers back there, I think for sure it lives on. But if we couldn't have caretakers back there, um, if we could reinstitute, we used to have something called Canyon Day. During Canyon Days, um, we would have these cleanup days, and the idea was that we would do some minor repairs and do some landscaping so pe people could walk the trails without having mm -hmm. to dump. Mm -hmm. But um, we did it twice a year, so not just once a year, but twice a year. And so by the time after we'd gone through three years, I would say the amount of graffiti and vandalism that occurred between visits diminished quite I would say it was all gone on bed. When you go up there, it, there, you could see the original paint color, so to speak. Versus if you go up there now, it's hard to see any white paint if that's the color you use. So my hope is if we can increase the maintenance and the care that goes up there, even if we could start a club, um, it would go a long ways towards preserving kind of what's up there now.